Welcome back, Disc Golf World. We are here for round two of the 2023 Music City Open presented by Lone Star Disc. This is a Disc Golf Pro Tour Elite event playing at Mill Ridge Park here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Connor O'Reilly, and today we have in the booth with us Miss Holly Finley. <laughs> uh, Connor's pretty good at the intro, so I might let him do that from now on. We've got a player that we, Texas native, I believe we saw her at some Texas events last month. So I'm excited to see her on the lead card. And some returning players who have taken a short hiatus. First up, that would be Kona Montgomery with the new last name and freshly married. Congratulations to her. And Henna Blomroos. First in park percentage from Team Innova. Third on the card is going to be Chrissy Fountain from Austin, Texas area. Just under 900 right in. Excited to watch her play today. And rounding it out, we have Haley King. Third in park percentage. We got some firepower on this card. Conditions are saturated today, you guys. Let's check out hole one, 646 feet par four. You do have that OB area starting at that corner right there, continuing all the way around left. Your drive should land about where that person was. You can send your second shot into the green if you're feeling aggressive, but there's no shame in playing this first hole for par. You can land your second shot somewhere around here, giving yourself a long circle two putt. Maybe you'll make it. Hopefully you'll just get a par and move on to the next one. Yeah, great to see Kona back after taking a little hiatus with some health issues. And I know she's excited to get out here and compete, do what she loves. Yeah, a little high, but honestly got enough turn. Hannah's one of my favorite players to watch. Just love her form. Very impressive power for sure. Good reach back. Big flight on this one. Catch Cam, Making he underestimated advance. us. I'm going to have to ask him to move back. <laughs> Chrissy is left-handed, so we'll see some different lines coming out of her. This is going to be fun. Ooh, a little early, but... Gets enough action to beat that corner. And honestly, being off to the left on this hole really gives you better sight line. And just a easier opportunity, more options into the green. A little low out of the hand, but she makes the gap. Certainly parable from there. It'll be interesting to see with players of the power of henna and Haley, whether you know all day it, depending on who goes first on the tee does the other one try to match that distance do they, do they just play their shot sometimes when you're a powerful player and you're playing with other powerful players it kind of baits you into doing more than you need to sometimes and yeah unfortunately two nose up there Haley's gonna have a tough little scramble from about 75 feet this shot sets up well for a lefty See if Chrissy can sneak up there and get herself a putt. Not quite enough distance for that, and that'll be challenging to get around that corner up to the green. Yeah, this is a generally open track, but these little pockets of woods are extremely thick, and they have a lot of thorns and can be very punishing. Haha, 
I love it when the disc tombstones. Yeah, if you guys like tombstones or land sharks, whatever you want to call them, today is the day at this course. I played with Henna last year, and she threw a second shot on this hole and parked it. And it's just, it was so memorable because it was a Roadrunner, one of my favorite discs. Was that her second shot in right there? Yes, wow. it was. Able to play standstill putter into the green, just showing you guys how far she ripped that tee shot. I told you she was one of my favorites. She's You're so not wrong. good. Oh, this looks sketchy. Oh my gosh, having to go all the way over the top? Those trees are like... The courage of that shot, Chrissy. I would have never done that. And look at her, now she's putting for par. Oh, this is Narnia. The thing about the rough here is it's just gross. It's nasty, and you really can't do much from it. It's most of the time a pitch out at best. That was creative. You can get a putt from there. Yeah, we do see a lot of out-of-bounds throughout the course, but I do like that there is a couple pockets of rough, because like Holly said, it creates more room for creativity. Ooh, Kona almost put enough turn on that one to give it a bid. Good job missing that tree. This is Blomroos for birdie. Oh, almost floats one up in there. Got a taste of the chains, but not the full bite. This is Chrissy for par after that incredible scramble shot. And yeah, I don't think you can understate enough how sloppy the ground is out there today, you guys. This is the worst ground conditions I think I've ever played in on a course. I don't know about you, Holly. <laughs> when I was practicing, you see that rock next to Chrissy's foot. I stepped on one of those uh, just like it. It was wet. And I did the cartoon legs where they went in all the directions. And I was just <laughs> slipping and sliding, but I hadn't fell down yet. It was oh, pretty yeah. funny. I wish someone would have recorded it. I bet there would have been a lot of funny B cam from players just moving from point A to point B today. And King picks up a bogey here on the first. Bogey as well for Chrissy Fountain. Henna and Kona will walk away with pars. Yeah, like we said, a tough first. It's not a bad hole to take a par on. These first three holes play in the hardest third of the course, so you really want to come out. Just cruise, take your bars if you can, and hold two out of bounds surrounding both sides at 608 feet. This par four really pinches as you get into this mouth here. The further right you can be, the better sight line you have to the bucket. And this out of bounds continues coming on either side and wraps maybe only 25 feet long on the left side there. You do get two meters of relief coming into this one, so let's see if any players need to take that or not. But the worst part about today is you push it off to the right like you want to give yourself the sight line and the footing is way worse than if you're left. Kona started that shot in the middle of the fairway and obviously the disc was going to move left and now she's ended up out of bounds. You really have to push that backdrop right side, let the disc finish left if you're doing that right-handed backhanded shot. This is a great example of that. Ooh, Ooh yes, course love. Thank you, Bush. Yeah, you really got to push that line, like Holly said, and Henna did it well. Just gets enough action to stay in, but she's going to have that really slippery footing. Is he going to be in position to throw maybe a turnover into the green? Ooh, this looks nice. Beautiful shot from Haley King, primo positioning. Enough of a window for Chrissy to go forehand, but just a little bit tight to the corner. It's a par four, so she could scramble for par from there. This is Kona's third shot. Oh, 
Hard to do it much better as pinched as she was. You can maybe try to flip something up, but that's just a little that's just a little too much. Hannah go going with the standstill, which is a very smart play from that position. I had a lie from there today and all four of my four steps slid. It was not fun. Look at this shot from King. Ooh, a bit in the corner. Hope it sneaks up there. Oh my Out of bounds. That is just ugly. I mean, the best drive of the group, and I hate to see it. Yeah, dry ground. I bet Haley King gets up and down for birdie there. Eight and a half times out of ten. Chrissy, unfortunately, finds that out of bounds fence off to the right. Still going to have that bush line to navigate, too. And, you know, you might see that mulch up there be like, okay, that's nice. You know, we got some mulch to help handle the green, but you step on that mulch, your foot sinks in about two and a half, three, three inches. They did give us the <clears throat> barbed wire relief where you can take two meters off of the barbed wire on this hole. If you want it, it's not a required thing, but you can take up to it. As Chrissy takes her step out and pitches up. This is her strokes on folks and Ooh. not quite. I like the soft bid she gave it. Making sure she's cool to tap out before the rest of her card mates, since she was technically not the one that was out, but sometimes her pace of play, that's the best way to do it. As long as your card's cool with it. King carding another bogey here on the second. Kona will take a bogey as well. Unfortunate double for Chrissy. Henna sneaking away with the only par here on number two. Yeah, par par start absolutely plays here on holes one and two. is a new hole three par three 277 feet and i absolutely love it it reminds me of a bunch of little tennessee holes on all of our courses and i know that a lot of my fellow players do not agree with me but i don't care because i love this hole so here we have it you know the best way to get there it just requires a lot of creativity for me it's just a mako uh, right down the middle and make a putt so Excited to see what everyone else does here. Blomroos up first after the only par on hole two. Holly, I just knew you were going to love this one. Mm, made the Mando, but out of bounds. Yeah, there's a lot of elevated uh, teeing surfaces out here. And if you want to use the front of the surface the way Henna and Kona are electing to, you really don't have any room to follow through. So can be an extra layer of difficulty. This is a little shout out to future course designers. We do not like elevated tees. Or if you do, let's have at least maybe a, follow -through a meter area. or two of area around the teeing area to follow through on. Yes. Because I think yes. they do add a, a good a good touch sometimes and they look good. But yeah, like Holly said, we need, we need space to follow through. Mm. Not much progression from the group. King making it the furthest down the fairway, but no one really up there for a putt. Hannah having to throw out over the out of bounds. Ooh. 
yeah, got herself up there nicely. You can't do it too much better than that without really just trying to cut through the trees and risk kicking out again. I saw a very interesting play today where a girl just did a half shot right there to where Kona was purposefully and then just did another little half shot like Kona just did instead of trying to, you know, do the whole hole at the same, at one time, if you will, just breaking it down into two pieces um, instead of trying to get up there. Yeah, if you watched yesterday's coverage, I said this one almost has like those par four rules for me where, you know, you hit the initial gap and you kind of take the rest. If you take a three, you feel really good, I think. And twos feel great on this one. Robert Leonard, PDGA course marshal, lingering in the background. Kona floats it up there, not quite enough to go in. And this is king for a birdie putt. That was brave. Yeah. Yeah, this is one where, you know, the, it's not one that you really want to try to park. It makes it a lot harder to try to flex something down there. I think you play a straight disc with a little bit of turn or maybe an understable disc flat. Get yourself to circle the edge right if you can. Kirstie slides that one in. That was a, was a near miss, but one of those she can pick her bogey and move on. Like we said, this starting stretch is tough, so let's see if she can find some focus and keep battling. Sometimes when I make a putt like that, I whisper a little thank you to the basket. Tap the side that caught it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's deserving. <laughs> Hina yeah. with an unfortunate double after a clean start. I'm kind of surprised. from the rest. She went with that standstill, but she was kind of positioned on the right side of the tee box, which I, I feel like you'd want to be more on the left there just to make it a kind of a straight shot, but maybe she just wanted to open the flex window. And uh, here we are on our first par five of the course, 814 feet. Should have a bit of a tailwind, maybe a touch off the right today. Play a shot somewhere out just, just short of where the drone just went past. Second shot, you want to get over this creek and find yourself really anywhere out in the open. If you're inbounds on your first two shots and make decent progress, you should have some kind of opportunity for birdie. And as long as you don't do anything too bad, the par should be a simple one here. Montgomery up first. Just playing a safe bailout shot. Still easy to get a birdie from there. And playing a little more aggressive line, and that's going to be a good, good reaction off the trees. If you can get it out to the left, you can attack across the creek a little more with a flat angle instead of having to turn it. Christy should be able to throw the same shot three times on this one if she wants the birdie, and let's see if she can set up for that. No one really challenging that right side, but Hina definitely pushed the distance on that one. Chrissy's in a great position. Yeah, a little right. Even up. though this course looks like distance heavy, uh, yesterday even par uh, got a spot on lead card. So because of the out of bounds and the conditions, you know, really just keeping it safe uh, can move you up the leaderboard out here at Mill Ridge. Yeah, I mean, we saw yesterday three holes only playing at even or under par for the FPO field. And like Holly said, pars are great out here. Kona, great throw through the slip. That was impressive. <laughs> Glad she didn't fall. I think that was that was one of my side goals today. Just don't fall on the course. Anna putting this one way up there. She's going to have short work for a birdie look. Chrissy's third shot. It's a little low. Hmm. 
be hard to trust those forehands when it's this wet sometimes because you have to take a big last step and really put some force into that front foot to get a good shot. Yeah, Kona, or... Haley just needed that one to flip on the face, but it didn't quite get it. Okay. A little deep for Kona, but... A safe putt, and let's see if she can cash it in for the birdie. Chrissy will have a bullseye putt for par. Yeah, there's really no running this one from outside of 70 or 80 as it really steeply drops off and... You don't really want to mess with a comeback putt on this elevated basket. No chance. Ooh, Haley left that one just short of the circle. That was not what she was looking for. Mm, a little timid on that putt. Kona for birdie. Hmm. Just low. Ask for permission to tap real quick. One of those days where if you can play fast, you kind of want to. Yeah, you can, really, you can make almost one or two mistakes on this one and still take par. But the bogey's still out there. Henna with the only birdie here on the fourth. Let's see if Haley can turn around this streak of red here on the fifth. Hole five, par four, 587 feet. Your first shot is a placement shot. Decide what gap you wanna go through or just throw it and give yourself a surprise. Your second shot could be on this left side or through that center gap. If you're feeling aggressive or you had a really good drive, you can probably get a birdie on this one. It's not hard to do if you land in primo position. Otherwise, just do a chip shot, a chip shot, get up there near the basket and take your par. Lombrus up first. And she has lined up perfectly with this center gap. Ooh, Kona clips that twiglet. That'll be fine. Yeah, it's like a 30 to 40 foot kind of distance range that you can be within to have an opening to look at the basket. Anything short or long of that is going to be really tricky. A little much on the hyzer for Haley, but wow, great power. Perfect positioning. Chrissy landing at that shorter gap. And that's fine. She can play it for par from there. Ooh, Kona's kind of in a weird spot. You really just want to get through this gap, try to get up there and get a par. Now this is a spot where you can attack for birdie. It's a little wide. I mean, that's a 55 footer at it, I guess. Yeah, it's a very common spot to see players kind of short and left on this one, not having to deal with the out of bounds and giving themselves a chance for an easy par. Ooh, I like this one. Yeah, Haley coming out with some great speed on those forehands. She smoked that thing. Waiting on the spotter's call. <laughs> Sometimes when you're waiting for the spotter to show you the flag, you know, 
three seconds feels like 30 minutes. We appreciate all the volunteers coming out there and working for free in the rain. Especially on a day like today. And today. Fountain needs to get this up near the basket to play for par, and she does. Very well done. We got two chances at birdie from circle two. Let's see if we can get a connection. Not quite enough to get in. Yeah, and just low out of Haley there in the tailwind. Ooh, what a solid putt that was. Slung that one in there. Well, five wasn't necessarily the hardest pull to par today, but it only gave up one birdie. An unfortunate error from Kona. But I gotta give a little shout out to Ella Hansen grabbing the one birdie here today. Haley King walking away with a par. Kona just kind of a little right on the alignment. Shake it off. Switching putters. Yeah, she had been putting with that green one on a couple. This is the one. There it is. Okay, they were both green. Never mind. It looked kind of white from that angle. Hate to see that one slip away from Kona. Happens to the best of us. Yeah, and like today, you just gotta survive and keep your head in it no matter what happens. Kyle Klein stepping up for the birdie on 18. You're open champion, Gannon Burr. Another record-setting weekend on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Back-to-back -back weeks, winner coming from the chase card. Pretty special stuff. Dan and Burr, Kyle Klein, two young superstars on tour. Showing you how to get it done. Drama all the way to the final hole. Kristen to win the Waco Annual Charity Open. She's done it! Kristen to tar. Hole six, it's gonna be our second and final par five of the course. 849 feet, you really gotta push it left into this landing zone here to be able to make any kind of progress. And from there, you wanna chip it somewhere right around where Henna is right there. You give yourself either a backhand straight shot turnover or forehand into the green. Another one of those par fives where if you just keep it in bounds on those first three, par should be simple, birdie should still be on the table. And it's big power and just doesn't need to go flat at all, just spikes it over there. Perfect position. There you go, Chrissy switching to a slightly more overstable driver it looks like. and. It's a little tighter S flight there than she had been getting. Amy also has the power to push this one pretty high and still get the distance. Once again, making the catch cam dance. Always a good thing. Kona also no slouch in the distance department. She's got a very clean swing and generates a lot of power. Chrissy most likely just looking to get up and down for her par on this one. 
If you can get your second shot into the right position, you can see the basket and get lined up really well for a birdie attempt. But it really is a matter of being in perfect position. I need this one to dig. Oh, and gets some tree love, you guys. It is so thick in there. That's a that's possibly like a one and a half stroke swing right there. I know we don't have half strokes, but y'all know what I mean. That's pretty good. I said today I played with Paige Shu, world champ, that her shots here were the best I'd ever seen on that hole. But Haley King just made it about five feet past Paige. So now <laughs> Haley's shots are the best I've ever <laughs> seen on this hole. going flex forehand and bites through the stuff. Ooh, that's a good looking shot. And his drive just made this hole way easier than it is for most players. Still, a lot of meat on the bone for that birdie though. See if she can make her first big putt of the round. Chrissy will also have a long putt to save her par. I'm interested to see her not throw a flex forehand there. I think she could have moved it more to the right than maybe that backhand allowed, but I guess just looking for a more simple one angle shot. Kona just lays that one up after the last hole, just looking to make it easy on the putting green. Ooh, nice birdie putt from Henna. There it is. Made sure to duck down so that the putter would lift up and make it in there. Pro move. Haley King with a birdie as well. Kona takes her par, moves on. I love a drop-in par. Yeah, like we said, this course is playing hard, and pars are, are really good for the most part. There's a couple holes you definitely want to pick up, but staying in control out here is going to pay dividends. Let's check out hole 7, 436 feet. Par 3, we are up on this elevated deck tee. The nice windy tee shot. If you're a right-handed, backhanded player, you can punch it to this right corner, let the disc swing in left, and give yourself a birdie putt. If you short it in highs or left, it makes the hole kind of difficult. You have to contend with this middle line of trees on your upshot, and it is extremely windy yesterday and today. Choosing the proper disc for this wind is key to executing this shot. Yeah, you can see that drizzle kind of accumulating on the camera lens here to show you guys how tough the conditions are and we really have to keep mentioning it because it, the, the conditions never show on camera the slope doesn't show the footing doesn't show the wind and the rain don't quite show how strong they are so you know if you think you think we're beating a dead horse i promise you we're not King will have a downhill look at Birdie. Kona finishing over there in that tricky area. Gotta do a bit of a scramble shot to get to the basket. Chrissy just didn't get quite enough on that one. Maybe just He's worried about slipping on the elevated tee and has to play out of the amber waves of grain. Make sure to check for ticks, Chrissy. A 
you can see this just a weird scrambleville over there as I mentioned you can tell Kona didn't really look decisive in what she wanted to do maybe thought about the gap maybe the little low ground skipper yeah as a player when you have a lot of options don't get vague don't pick okay I have these two options I'm gonna kind of just throw it it's like no you gotta choose your one option that you really want to go with and commit to it especially on these more open courses Kona decides to play for bogey here does not want to run that downhill putt I like Chrissy's reaction, that soft little clap. It reminds me of like a James Conrad reaction. Yeah, remaining even keel while playing a sport like disc golf is so important. I think obviously you're going to have your highs and you're going to have your lows, but the more you can try to just stay steady, the easier it's going to be throughout the course of a round, a tournament, a year. Haley King did not go for that downhill birdie putt. She decided to play for par, which was a wise choice. No birdies on the seventh today. And hole eight is one of my favorite new additions to the course at 315 feet. This par three plays gradually uphill the entire way thick wood line on the right here that kind of opens up after about halfway and then you kind of come into this wood line on the left one stand of trees out there on the right that doesn't really come into play unless you will overturn your backhand as a right hand player or just push the disc out there i really think this green is picturesque and ideally you can land somewhere edge of circle short and maybe get some good ground action there are a lot of little stumps and roots and rocks on this one though so not always consistent with the ground play. Good shot from Henna. If you're having trouble getting to this green, it's better to err on the right side. Let the disc finish on the right because once you start going left, it is just really tough to get up and down. I'd rather throw something more understable and fade to the right than overstable and fade to the left. And that one. Kind of got away from Kona. Let's see what Chrissy has for us here. She's hanging out over in that bailout zone I mentioned. Yeah, it's such a big key to get off to the right here. Really just takes away a lot of the teeth of this hole. Oh, that little kick back to that corner is going to make that so much more difficult for her. Great miss of that tree from Chrissy. It goes with kind of that two finger spread grip there to maybe provide a little more touch coming in slowly. It's one of my favorite things about commentary is that I get to see all the different, uh, the ways that everyone holds their putters as well as their drives and their forehands. And there's a, there's, you know, there's like a few generally accepted ways to do things, but here and there, you know, a player gets creative and you know, a la a Raven Newsom, Newsom on the MPO side who throws three finger forehands, you know? People get creative out there and they find a way to make it work for them and sometimes textbook is good, but whatever works. There's a couple one fingers out there too. There are, yeah. I know Andrew Marweed, Gavin Babcock, they both play one finger forehands. King put her focus goggles on, tapped out that bogey putt. That was a solid looking putt from Kona, but she'll be walking away with a bogey as well here on the eight. Two bogues, two pars. Yeah, it's a good one. I think you always want to kind of just bump up in speed here and maybe down in stability because it's hard to miss long and you really want to get it off to the right.
hole nine, 327 feet, par three. We do have an out of bounds line on the right side as well as a barbed wire fence. Players do get two meters relief off of that. The out of bounds is behind the basket as well. They've cleaned up that big tree on the left last year. That thing was massive. It went all the way to the ground. You had to climb underneath it and good luck with a scramble shot. This year, this is a pretty clean par three. A nice tunnel shot. Send it straight down there and get yourself a birdie putt. Oh, that is in the wrong direction from Blomroos, but she can scramble from there. Yes, yeah, another hole I really like. Me too. I feel like hole eight, nine, and ten, you can kind of throw a similar shape, similar shot. You can kind of get in a rhythm, maybe play the same disc if you're feeling it. King lining up the sidearm. I love that shot. Well done. She'll have a birdie putt at it from about 36. I'm going straight at it with it look like a slower disc, maybe a mid, maybe a slow fairway, but check out that big tree. Let me know in the comments how old you think that tree is. My brother is from Tennessee. He caddied for me today. He said 250. I was guessing maybe 180. That thing's beautiful. It is glorious. Makes you just want to have a little picnic underneath it. Smooth upshot from Fountain. Kona leaving herself with a tap in par. King for birdie. That was a little low out of the hand. Yeah, the OB is close enough here where if you know you give it too much and don't hit anything, it can definitely roll there. Ooh! She's safe. Yeah, tough tee shot out of Pinna there. She's kept it pretty clean on the front nine so far, though. Mm -hmm. Haley and Kona, yeah, <laughs> with some pars here on the night. Just hoping to see a birdie there, but saving it for tomorrow. Yeah, we saw. As the same as yesterday, the front nine definitely plays harder than the back, so hopefully some more birdies coming up. Here's a look at that leaderboard. Kristen, Macy Velodiaz, Holland Hanley, all within one stroke, and then it kind of drops off a little bit after that. Midwestern Sarah Gilpin, not on tour, but when she shows up, she shows up. Appreciate you guys tuning in to the Music City Open Round 2 Front 9 coverage. Please follow along Ace Run Pro on all of their socials, and you can check out my YouTube at uh, Holly Finley. Got some pro tips on there. You might want to check out. Maybe you'll learn something. If yeah. you do, leave a comment. <laughs> check out that link in the description for both Holly's information and mine. We're pumping out the content all year long, you guys. And excited to see you guys for the back nine.